Right, big weekend for four of last year's Olympic team who make their debuts in the pro ranks. The eagle eye among you may have spotted Terry Edwards in the corner of your shot of arms ago. Terry, of course, their coach at last year's games in Beijing. Terry with us right now. Terry, welcome along. Thank you very much, Andy. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good to have you along to the show. You were a proud man in Beijing. You must be a proud man once again this weekend. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, initial thoughts? My initial thoughts, I think it's obviously it's an exciting weekend. It depends, I think, how focused they are and, uh, and, and the glitz of the evening. I think, uh, obviously, the, uh, the opponents are tough opponents from, tough from the pronounce. Eastern Bloc. Tough to They're pronounce. Tough to pronounce. Well, yeah. They're tough. I mean, they're, they're the Georgians and the Belarusians and... Uh, they're, they're tough guys, and uh, and they'll come to fight. But I think obviously the class of the uh, of the four Olympians that were going out, then I think will come through. But they need to be focused. I yeah. think in any complacency, then I think it could be their undoing. That's an interesting point you make there about focus. Because Chris Eubank was in a couple of weeks ago, Terry, sitting where you are, and he said that. Uh, what is that? That's man, James Tuchel. James James Tuchel. <laughs> he said, I can tell you now, he will foul simply because of the money allegedly that James has got. James has refuted that. He's come back quite strongly and said, no, it's nothing to do with that. I've kept my desire. But I, I, I tend to agree with you. I mean, these guys need to prepare for each fight like it's an Olympic final. And that's hard when they can go online, check a guy's record, see he's lost four of his last seven. It's kind of hard to motor. So, I mean, you had no problem motivating them at international no. events because no. they're fighting someone better each time. Uh, do, you think, do you think that's a real fear, a danger, a real genuine danger? They could take their eyes off the prize still. Well, I, I, think, uh, I think the people that are looking after them will, will keep their eye on the ball, to be perfectly honest. Yeah? I think the difference between the amateurs, obviously, for their level, is that they was going in possibly against much, much stronger opponents yeah. at that time and, and, and their level. Uh, and, and obviously their first bouts and, and their first fights, as a pro, they will be guided through it and, sure. and, and the opponent will be handpicked, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah that's but understandable. That's the way you it works. take the eye off the ball, anything can happen in that ring. Bunty, are they their own biggest enemies here? Absolutely. If they have their eyes on the ball, if they take yep. this seriously and yep. fight to their potential, they shouldn't struggle. Uh, listen, let me tell you something. If they can keep their heads down and sacrifice the next 18 months and get 12 fights or 10 fights uh, in the bag until they develop, until they've got that, that tank, it's no good being able to run a marathon and do one-fingered press-ups. If you've never been six rounds, doesn't matter how many marathons you can run, how many one-fingered, even if they're pinky-finger press-ups you can do, there's no replacement for rounds. Am I right, Terry? There's exactly. no even even exactly. as, even as a, even as a top quality amateur. Once it switches to four, when it was at five a few years ago, you need the top quality round. So these boys, they need to keep their head down, celebrate Friday and Saturday night respectively. These are the fun fights. This is real fun, fanfare, blah blah blah. Then the press will back away, and that's when it gets serious in their gyms, and that's when the lights are off. That's when they're no longer on anything like a red carpet, no longer inside that Beijing bubble of glory and fun. Okay, then they have to knuckle down. It's 18 months sacrifice just to get to the stage where they're moving towards what would pass as an area title or a WBC International or WBO International. And I'll tell you what, it's not as easy as people think. And especially if people say, you know, they've got plenty of money. What well, they're doing this, they're having hand-picked opponents. They are. But they've got to rediscover some form of desire and some form of hunger. And something in their head could be telling them, even though they may be training hard, doing the right work, something in their head will be telling them, but really, this guy's rubbish. Well, they might be rubbish, but they're still opponents. They're still guys that can throw punches, still guys that can butt you, still guys that can use their elbow. Let's hear from one of them now then. Frankie Gavin takes on George Kadaria on Saturday. He's a Georgian. Gavin fighting at light welter. He's eager to get going. Can't wait. I've slept on sleep last night thinking about it. Just keep wanting them to fight through my mind. I always win, but yeah, uh, it's going to be a great week. And what about the training? I mean, obviously I saw you just before Christmas, I think, and you were settling in really well, but it seems now you can see that these are your, your mates as well as the guys that you train with. Yeah, it's like a good family here, yeah, big... It's a big laugh in the gym, but when training's on, you really are training. I don't think I've ever been this fit, because I've been really fit in amateur boxing, but you got to go on for longer in this sort of game, so my engine's as big as it's ever been, so the big change since last time you've seen me in weight and how fit I am. And what about this week? I mean, it's gonna, there's going to be a bit of a media frenzy, I guess, probably more than you're, you're used to, the amount of cameras and the interest that's going to be involved in it. Yeah, it's going to be really busy in that, but it's just something I've got to got to get used to really, it just comes with the game, it's just another day at the office really, so 
just got to just train hard and just try and enjoy it. Has Frankie got the most to prove? Bearing in mind what happened prior to Beijing, will the pressure be on him? Do we need to see him box four rounds? Do we need to see him get a quick knockout? No, I think uh, ideally for Frankie, he needs to be in there for three or four rounds, I think, because it's uh, a long time since Frankie's boxed. I think, uh, and I think he'll put the, uh, the issues in Beijing behind him, and I think he will be focused. I think that uh, Frankie's got too much talent to foul. I've never, I've seen Frankie and been with Frankie when he's lost, but I've never seen him foul to perform, and, and I think he'll be up for it on uh, a Saturday night. Yeah, I, I, I love, I, what I like about Frankie Gavin is that, uh, talking to Anthony Farr now, they're not going to turn him into a slugger. So too many pro, uh, pro, pro promoters demand and too many pro trainers just try and slow their guys down and do this. Well, Frankie's big thing is an enormous ring, using his brain, floating around. I mean, it's going to be, and I warned about this on a couple, a couple of shows ago, you know, don't expect Rocky 2 with, with these guys or Rocky 9 or whatever it is now, Andy, uh, especially with Frankie Gavin. He's a guy that's going to enjoy himself. He's going to put some, he's going to get some rounds in and he'll find knockouts eventually, but he won't. Don't go looking for knockouts. Several of the others boxing on Friday and Saturday will go looking for knockouts. But I don't see Frankie Gavin going out mad. Although he might find the knockout because he, I think he's... I mean, would it be fair to say, Terry, that he, he just he's, he understands and can master angles and gaps and he's just a... He's, uh, he's, a, he's a genius in the ring sometimes. He's, he's, he? he's, he's one of the most... Yeah. Uh, clever boxers I've ever worked with. I mean, he's got a, a, a real boxing brain. Academically, he's not as bright, but boxing-wise, he he's really is a sharp... Potentially boxer. the best of the four? Well, I mean, that, I mean, it's very difficult at this stage to see. I mean, Put I, you think, on the spot. Uh, I think that uh, Frankie did what no other British boxer Never did, won a world it. title yeah. against some of the best boxers at the stage, and one boxer in particular, Tinchenko, best boxer pound for pound in the world at the time. Yeah. And, and, he, and, he, and he beat him by nine points. So I think, uh, Frank, it's about the discipline and, and, and his desire.